How much muscle can you actually build with steroids? On one hand, we have individuals who believe they can take you from average Joe to Mr. Olympia in a matter of months. On the other hand, we have so-called fitness experts who claim they only provide a slight advantage over lifting naturally. The truth, however, lies somewhere in the middle. But before we can talk about how much muscle steroids actually add, we must first understand our true natural limits. In the beginning, it's almost as if you can gain new muscle by simply looking at the weights. Over time, however, those magical newbie gains come to a screeching halt. One study published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine surveyed male athletes over time and averaged out their gains in muscle mass. It was concluded to be a range of 20 to 40 pounds of muscle over the lifetime of the lifter. In most cases, individuals will gain the most amount of lean muscle mass during their first year of training and then it tapers off gradually after that. Of course, the amount of muscle you gain each year depends on many factors such as genetics, program effectiveness, recovery resources, consistency, and many more. Assuming you're a natural lifter with average genetics who trains hard, trains consistently, and follows a solid nutrition plan, your muscle gains may look something like this. Year 1, 20 pounds. Year 2, 10 pounds. Year 3, 5 pounds. Year 4, two and a half pounds, and so on. For most, it'll take anywhere from five to 10 years to achieve your natural limit. The question then becomes, are these results typical among all populations, or are some individuals considered easy gainers while others have a harder time just putting on a few pounds of muscle? One study published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise looked at variability in muscle size and strength gain after unilateral resistance training in men and women. As predicted, both men and women exhibited a wide range of responses to resistance training. Some showed little to no gain in muscle mass and strength, while others showed significant gains, with most of the subjects falling somewhere in the middle. In other words, while there are some outliers, most individuals can gain a significant amount of muscle with the right diet, training program, and recovery habits. So, now that we have a better idea of how much muscle we can gain naturally, let's look at how much muscle you can gain with steroids. A steroid is simply a synthetic form of testosterone. Normally, when synthetic testosterone is injected into the body, it's usually at higher than normal levels than occurs naturally. Thus, it'll give the individual higher levels of testosterone and, in turn, increase several factors related to muscle mass and strength. From recovery and protein synthesis to metabolism and growth, testosterone can have significant effects on your success in the gym. And although using drugs isn't a guarantee that you'll gain an appreciable amount of muscle mass, there do seem to be some interesting findings among studies. One study published in the New England Journal of Medicine ran an experiment to compare how much muscle mass one could achieve. 43 men were split into four groups. One group did not exercise or take testosterone. The second group did not exercise but did take testosterone. The third group exercised but did not take testosterone. And the fourth group both exercised and took testosterone. It goes without saying, but the group who did not exercise or take testosterone gained the least amount of muscle, while the group that both exercised and took testosterone gained the most. Surprisingly, however, the group who did not exercise but did take testosterone gained significantly more muscle mass than the exercise-only group. Now, before you assume that you can simply take testosterone and skip the gym, you have to understand that these results were based on a dosage of 600 milligrams of testosterone. One study published in the American Journal of Physiology, Endocrinology, and Metabolism looked at how dosage affects results in muscle mass. 61 men were divided into five groups, each receiving a weekly dose of either 25, 50, 125, 300, or 600 milligrams of testosterone for 20 weeks. 
As expected, the higher the dosage, the more muscle they gained. But here's the kicker. All participants were instructed not to exercise at all. So it's fair to say that enhanced athletes have a definite advantage over all other groups whether they're training or not. That said, depending on the dosage, the advantage they have over lifting naturally will vary. Now, if you ever plan to cash in your natty card and hop on testosterone, consider this. A wide range of side effects can occur with the use and misuse of testosterone. While many mild side effects are reversible, others can be downright life-threatening and may become permanent. According to the National Institute of Health, steroid use has been associated with high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, atherosclerosis, and increased risk of blood clots. They'll increase the levels of low-density lipoprotein and decrease the levels of high-density lipoprotein, which increases the deposit of fatty substances inside the arteries. Not only that, but steroids can disrupt your natural production of hormones such as testosterone. Once you start injecting synthetic testosterone, your natural production will decrease or even stop altogether. These side effects can include decreased sperm production, shrinkage of the testicles, male pattern baldness, breast development in men, and increased risk of testicular cancer. And if that wasn't enough, steroids will suppress the immune system, which can compromise your ability to fight infections. They can also damage the liver, form tumors, and develop cysts, which can cause internal bleeding and even death. So, should you take testosterone? Of course, we would never advocate the use of steroids or testosterone, but if you ever face the decision, just be sure you've done the proper research, consulted with your doctor, and always monitor your health. That said, if you're new to weight training or just starting out, use the first few years to learn proper technique, develop healthy eating habits, and practice consistency with your training before you ever even consider the use of anabolic substances. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.